So, uh, they already completed the problems on bars and trusses. Soft copy of the lab manual. Okay, so we'll start with the simple cantilever beam, which is subjected to point load or a concentrated load. You can see the difference between uh, a bar and a beam. Uh, in bars, uh, the load was acting uh, in the axial direction. So as a result of which, uh, uh, there will be either tension or compression in the bar. But here, in case of beams, the load is acting in the transverse direction or the load is acting uh, in the perpendicular direction to the axis. So as a result of the transverse load, beam will be subjected to shear force and bending moment. So here, the aim of the experiment is to determine uh, maximum bending moment, maximum shear force, maximum stress in the beam, maximum deflection and to draw bending moment diagram and shear force diagram. Simple cantilever beam is given, uh, one end of the cantilever beam is fixed and the load is acting at the free end. So the length of the cantilever beam is given as 2 meters or 2000 mm. Uh, the load is given as uh, 4 kilonewtons or 4000 newtons. It is a point load. And the cross section of the beam is given. Uh, the width of the cross section of the beam is 60 mm, and uh, the height of the cross section is 90 mm. First, we'll start by drawing the shear force and bending moment diagram. So, as we know, uh, shear force is a summation of vertical forces acting across beam. So, there is only one vertical force acting in this beam, that is. Uh, 4 kilonewtons of load. So throughout the beam, there is no other load acting, only just only one load is acting, point load. So the shear stress will be, it is plotted here, it is in your manual. So shear stress will be 4000, minus 4000, because there is only one load acting, there is no other load acting in the beam. So shear stress is the summation of vertical forces acting on the beam, so it is just 4000. So coming to bending moment diagram, uh, bending moment is force into, bending moment is given by force into perpendicular distance. So force or load, the force acting here is four kilonewtons and the total distance uh, length of the beam is 2000. So, so bending moment is given by, as I told you, force into the perpendicular distance, the force or the load is acting at this point. So here, at the point of application of load, as the distance is zero, the bending moment will be zero. As the distance increases, see here, the bending moment also increases. So at the, uh, at the support where the distance is maximum, that is, uh, the total length of the beam is given as two meters or 2000 mm, so you have to multiply load that is 4000 into 2000. So it will be maximum bending moment will be 8 into 10 power 6 or 0.8 into 10 power 7 as it is given here. So we got the maximum bending moment and maximum shear force. Now we have to find out the maximum stress acting in the beam. So for that we have this equation, uh, bending moment equation uh, where uh, uh, it is given by, uh, sorry, bending equation. Uh, it is given by uh, M by I is equal to F by Y is equal to E by R, where M is bending moment uh, that we have here, that is 18 to 10 power 6 or 0 0.8 into 10 power 7, the maximum bending moment. I is moment of inertia. It is given by uh, BD cube by 12 uh, for rectangular cross section. So uh, EF is nothing but stress. So in some uh, books, uh, uh, they use the notation F for stress. We can use sigma also for stress. So Y is the distance of the uh, the layer of the beam uh, from the neutral axis. So which your layer for maximum uh, stress, you have to consider uh, the top layer the, of the beam. So here, and E is Young's modulus and R is radius of curvature. 
So if we equate here, say F or sigma or stress is equal to M by I into Y. So M is maximum bending moment, uh, 0.8 into 10 power 7. We have it, you can directly substitute. Into Y is uh, 90 by 2 because here the cross section is given, the height is given as 90. So from the neutral axis, you have to take the maximum distance to find out the uh, the maximum stress in the beam. So neutral axis uh, for a rectangular cross section will be exactly at the center, that is at 45, uh, 45 mm. So from the neutral axis, you have to take the maximum layer. So it will be 90 by 2. So in case of y, uh, in place of y, you have to substitute 90 by 2, and i is 60 into 90 cube by 12, that is B into D by 12. So B is breadth uh, and uh, D is depth or height, okay, so cube by 12. So totally if you solve this, uh, you'll get the maximum stresses 98.765 Newton per mm square. And maximum deflection for a cantilever beam which is subjected to point load is given by WL cube by 3 EI. So W is the load acting. The load is 4000 newtons or 4 kilonewtons. And uh, length is 2000 uh, mm or 2 meters. Uh, so 4000 into 2000 cube uh, divided by 3 into E is Young's modulus 2 into 10 power 5. Uh, into I is 60 into uh, 90 cube by 12. So that is moment of inertia. So if you solve this, you'll get the maximum deflection as 14.32. Okay, so this is about the manual calculations. So we'll solve the same problem using ANSYS and we'll see whether we can match up with the, uh, the manual results, whatever we got. So we'll start with Go to file, change job name. I'll use it as cantilever beam. Cantilever beam. Okay, so it is displayed here. Cantilever beam. So as we know, this is structural analysis. So go to preferences, structural. Okay. So next preprocessor element type add. Add. Uh, here you have to select uh, beam element. So element type beam. Uh, for bars and trusses, we used to select link element. Element type uh, link. So because link will only give results for uh, tension and compression. It won't give results for bending. Because, uh, so we, uh, we cannot select link here. So you have to select beam. Okay, because the shear force and bending is involved in case of beams. Select beam, uh, two node one eighty eight. Okay, okay, close. So real constants is not required in beams. Directly you can go to sections and uh, specify the type of cross section given. So even if you try to give real constants, it will not take. See, uh, add okay. Uh, so the beam one eighty eight element type does not require real constants. So close it. Directly you go to material properties, material models, structural, linear, elastic, isotropic. This is 2E5 and poisons ratio around 0.3. Okay, so next go to sections, beam, common sections. So here uh, in the subtype, you can change the cross section of the beam uh, according to your requirement. Even if you are analyzing a circular cross section beam, you can select circle. Or if you are analyzing uh, the hollow beam, you have here I section of the beam, you can select I section, uh, T section. Okay, depending on the requirement, you can change. So here we have a rectangular beam. So uh, I'll select the rectangle cross section. Now, base and the height uh, that is uh, base and height is given, uh, breadth and height is given. See if you go to uh, cross section here, so height is given as uh, 90 mm and uh, width is given as breadth or width 
height or depth okay and breadth is given as 60 mm so if you so breadth is 60 Next, go to modeling, create. Here you have to create key points, not nodes, in case of beams because you'll be meshing it later. So first you have to create key points in active series. Uh, first key point I will create it at the origin. So you can either leave it blank or you can just type zero. So key point one is at the origin. So key point two, uh, I'll create at the total length of the beam given is 2000 mm. So I'll create at 2000. Okay. So two key points are created. So now you have to go to lines, lines, straight line, and join the two key points. Select key point one and two. So after modeling, you have to go to meshing. Okay, so meshing, select mesh tool, go to global, set number of element divisions to uh, say you can uh, set it to 20. Okay, you can vary the uh, division, uh, the number of division. So I'll show it to you later. Uh, so as of now, I'll take test 20. Okay. So mesh, click on the beam. Okay. So I'll go to, to update the view, plot, multi-plot, see. So now this beam is divided into 20 equal parts. Uh, to see the 3D view, you can go to plot controls, style, size and shape display to on this display of element okay see here so the beam is divided into 20 equal parts but if you observe here closely uh, see what we had given in the cross section if you observe the cross section closely so we had given the breadth as 60 and height as 90 has taken uh, the breadth or width as 90 and height as 60. Okay. This is because the uh, coordinates of beams is different from the coordinates of lenses. So what you can do is uh, while queuing in the sections, while giving the cross section, see, go to section, common section. So you can interchange it here only. It is a simple method. Otherwise, what you have to do is you have to create one more key point in along the y axis and you have to rotate the beam uh, or you have to change the orientation of the beam along the key point. So, otherwise, simple method is just interchange the height and uh, width. So, I will make width as 90 and this plot multi plots oh, so, so now the height has become 90 and the width is 60 so now so next thing is so next is i'll fix one end of the beam and i'll apply load at the other end of the beam go to loads uh, define load, apply, structural, displacement, on key points. Here we have created key points. So on key points, I'll fix key point one along all DOF. Okay. So next, apply force on key points and select key point two, apply. The load acting is 4,000 4, newtons, so minus 4.23 newtons. Okay. So now, 
everything is done that is we have created a cantilever beam we have fixed it on one end and we have applied the solution solve current in this solution is done so to view the results go to general post processor uh, go to element table define table so we have to define table to plot shear force and bending moment diagram so we have to define table so go to element table define table add scroll down by sequence number smisc you have to remember the numbers here so for bending moment uh, the numbers are 3 and 16 and for shear force it is 6 and 19 smic 6 and 19 uh, so for 3 and 16 by sequence number 3 and 16 for bending moment 6 and 19 for So if, you, if it is difficult for you to remember, I'll show you uh, how to remember it. And uh, that is these codes that is 3, 16, 6, and 19. Close. So that is if you type help comma beam here. Type help comma beam. No. So we'll get a new window here. So click on beam. So the beam that we have selected here is beam one eighty eight. Here you can see the axis of beam is given here the axis of the coordinates of beam and this is the coordinate of ANSYS so that's why we have to interchange the cross section that height and width of the cross section so uh, along y axis there is uh, we have z axis of the beam so that's why we have to interchange so coming to shear force and bending moment diagram see if you scroll down yeah, see, this is for bending moment, SMIC 3 and 16. And for shear force, it is SMIC 6 and 19. Okay. So go to plot results, contour plot. Okay. Uh, so line element results 3 and 16. Uh, first we'll see the shear force 6 and 19 see the shear force so maximum shear force is 4000 or minus 4000 see if you compare with the theoretical results so it is minus 4000 so coming to bending moment and 16 so what is the result we got here 0 0.8 into 10 power 7 here in ANSYS we got almost close to 0 0.8 this 0 0.780 okay so if you increase the mesh size see we have divided this uh, 
beam into 20 parts. So if you increase the mesh size, I'll go to session editor here and I'll increase the mesh size. Uh, now the answer what we got is maximum bending is 0 0.780 to uh, 10 power 7. So I'll increase the mesh size and see what happens. So where is the number 20? Yeah, see, E size 20. I'll make this 200. Okay. So it is 0 0.78 now. So see. So now it has become 0.79 into 10 power 7. That is, it is converging towards the exact value. The solution is converging. So 0.79, it's almost equal to 0.8 into 10 power 7. So that, that is the importance of meshing. So next, uh, what else we have to find? Uh, find uh, the maximum stress and maximum deflection okay so go to general post processor plot results uh, element solution stress select one my stress one my stress so you might have studied about one my stress in uh, 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 design design subject so it is usually used for uh, ductile materials for my cis criteria uh, see here so dmx is nothing but the maximum uh, deflection maximum deflection theoretically we got 14.632 uh, in ANSYS it's almost near 14.663 okay and uh, maximum stress we got 98.5 and uh, no, almost 98.7 and 98.5. Okay, almost all the answers are matching. See where the maximum stress is. See, maximum stress is at this fixed end. So the maximum deflection is here at the free end or wherever the load is acting. Okay. So this completes the first problem on beams. Thank you.